6.43 here on your Wednesday morning. We are kicking off news to go with a live look over a gloomy city. Mm. Still got lots of clouds hanging around. These are the remnants of barrel. They brought Ooh. those storms overnight along with some windy, rainy, muggy weather this morning. So Randy, the good news is no widespread damage from the backside of barrel that prompted tornado warnings in our region. I mean, in some crazy clouds. So right. many people on social media mm -hmm. just posting what they saw. Your picture had from a storm cell right on top of our neighborhood. It was wild. It was wild. The clouds were so low to the ground. Well, we had basically the wall clouds coming in. Those are the, the clouds that rotate. Mm -hmm. The really scary Vertically. ones. Well, if you think about it, okay, there's wall clouds and there's shelf clouds. A wall is this way. Yeah. A shelf is this way. So they were rotating around a vertical axis. It so, makes so much sense. And so you're seeing funnel. There were a lot of reports of funnel clouds. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I mean, we did get out of yesterday. Best case trade. scenario yeah. on yeah, that for sure. So but we're still dealing with the back side of this system. So as we take a look at the live radar right now, we've got rain showers rolling through and they are driven by 20 mile an hour winds. So it's not heavy rain, but it's not pleasant when you get hit with it coming at you at 20 miles an hour. Uh, right now, the 275 loop shows some pockets of showers. You can see some light rain. Just crossing through the west side from Cheviot to Delhi, Wyoming and Glendale seeing some light rain. A little bigger pocket right now. Newtown into Terrace Park and Milford uh, over toward Claremont County, even Brown County getting in on a couple of light rain showers to the north. Uh, right now, a little rain about to cross by Hamilton and Fairfield. You can see it lined up along 75. So our friends at Mason, Lebanon, South Lebanon, all seeing those light rain showers. And then into Kentucky, uh, looks like Kenton County getting hit a little bit harder than Boone or Campbell County at this point. And, you know, these light showers will continue off and on for us until we get totally on the backside of this system. So still a couple of rounds of lighter showers driven by the wind coming through our area for today. So barrels backside and produces winds, which sounds awful every time I say it. I'm sorry. Sustained winds about 20 miles an hour, gusts 30 to 40, and then temperatures today stuck in the 70s. You're going to notice when you step outside this morning, it is incredibly muggy. It will eventually turn less humid as we get into the late afternoon and evening. So dealing with barrel for one more day, there's a warm up for the weekend and we'll talk about how long the less humid air will linger coming up. Steven. Thanks so much, Randy. A lot of backside talk this morning. Backside but, you know, wind. That's, that's, that's the news story today. <laughs> All right, overnight, this weather did leave some damage in our area. This yeah. is a look at a home on Euclid Road in Columbia Township. The homeowners tell us a 100-year-old oak tree fell on their home, waking them up in the middle of the night. The family tells us there's now a hole in the roof, and they're still waiting on Duke crews to help get those wires cleaned up. But the good news here, nobody was hurt. Yeah, and we're leading the way with breaking news after two early morning crashes, both of them on 75. The first one happened shortly before 2 a.m. on northbound 75 near the Norwood lateral. Two semi trucks crashed, fully closing the northbound lanes for hours. Thankfully, we're told nobody was hurt in this crash. The lanes reopened shortly after 4 a.m. Now, while crews worked to clear that scene, another crash happened in the southbound lanes just north near Paddock Road. Right now, it's not clear if anybody was hurt, but as you see on the video of your screen, that Prius pretty badly damaged on the front and the back. Megan, she has been watching traffic for the last hour. Hopefully nothing to slow people down as they head out to work. And that always is the hope, Stephen. In fact, it's not too bad right now. This is one accident we're looking at on 133, a crash near Happy Hollow Road. Besides that, the big map is pretty good. Um, the only other things that we're looking at is a shoulder that is uh, is down because of a crash that happened on 275 that is near Mostella Road. Besides that, though, not too bad this morning. The big map looking very, very good. One thing to keep in mind is that because of the storms last night, because there's still some lingering precipitation, the roads are pretty wet this morning. That's that uh, shoulder down at Mostella Road that I mentioned. So if you are headed out this morning, there is the potential for things to be a bit more slippery than you're used to. Just keep that in mind as you head out. Travel times right now, not too bad. We'll keep you updated as the morning goes on, Stephen. All right, Megan, 647 coming up on 648. More support today for the city of Florence following Saturday's deadly birthday party shooting. It directly changed the lives of seven families, but the entire community came together last night for the four people killed and the three others still recovering. WLWT News Times Daniel Dindak is live in Florence with how this community is navigating through tragedy. Danielle. Stephen, the city of Florence is offering grief counseling services this morning here at the government center building. Now this comes after last night when more than a thousand of people got together for a prayer vigil at 
the Crossroads Church here in Florence. Now, at that vigil, it honored 44-year-old Melissa Parrott, 20-year-old Shane Miller, 19-year-old Delaney Erie, and 20-year-old Hayden Rabicki. Families of the victims were in attendance alongside a community wrapping their arms around them for the long journey ahead. Governor Andy Bashir also sending his condolences to the victims' families. But once again, grief counseling services will be available today here at the Government Center building. That will be from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We'll have much more information about that over on our website. Reporting live in the city of Florence, Danielle Dindak, WBAT News 5. Danielle, thank you. Happening today, remembering the life of a young girl in Silverton a year after she was killed in a drive-by shooting. The family of nine-year-old Demaya Barton Pickens is still asking for justice. Police say nine-year-old Demaya was with a friend inside a home on Plainfield Road a year ago. She was hit in the chest by a bullet. Now, two men are charged in her death because of that drive-by. A third is also charged in connection to the crime. Again, that remembrance will be at noon today at the Hamilton County Courthouse. If you do decide to go, you're asked to wear pink to honor Demaya. Family and friends gathered to remember four-year-old Jamison Beck, who was hit and killed by a car over the weekend. And Boone County Sheriff's deputies say Jamison, who had autism and was nonverbal, left his family home in the middle of the night when the family was sleeping and walked onto Weaver Road over 75 in Florence. A driver noticed that boy tried to slow down, but it was too late. He was hit by a car and officials say so far no charges have been filed in the case. 650 news to go continues with a crackdown on dangerous driving happening throughout the state of Kentucky through the end of this month. This morning, Giacomo Luca is live from the roads. Giacomo, this is a dangerous time of year statistically. What are police looking for specifically with this campaign? Yeah, they're definitely going to be looking for aggressive as well as speeding drivers. You're going to see a lot of police out over the next couple of weeks as traffic safety officials across the state are urging drivers to be safe. We're taking a drive right now on northbound 7175, uh, just passing Fort Mitchell this morning as officials are partnering with police statewide to focus on excessive speed and aggressive driving, which led to a third of all crashes in Kentucky last year. We're also in the heat of construction season where lots of workers are present along the roads. A new state law adds hefty fines for people who are driving uh, dangerously in work zones. Those fines can range from $500 to even more. Meanwhile, violators could even lose their licenses if they're caught driving dangerously in those construction zone. All of this comes just six weeks after a road worker was killed in a construction zone just south of Louisville. We're live this morning on 7175 northbound. Giacomo Luca, WLWT News 5. Thank you, Giacomo. Developing out of northern Kentucky, a hit and run in a Kroger parking lot. It happened at the store on Dixie Highway in Fort Mitchell around 630 last night. Kenton County dispatchers confirmed to us somebody was hit, but we're not sure how bad the injuries are. We're told that the driver did take off, but officials have not shared any suspect information. A suspected case of road rage escalates to gunfire on 75 in Cincinnati. An upset driver is accused of shooting at another car near the Mitchell Avenue exit. Thankfully, the two men inside weren't hurt. They tell us it started in the southbound lanes of 75 when another driver pulled up beside them, started shouting, and then eventually pointed a gun at them. The men got a description of the car and a partial license plate. They say it was a white Kia Soul, and the back window was missing and was duct taped. 652, a couple accused of abusing and torturing. Their five adopted children now face more serious charges, and now one of their biological children is charged too. Matthew and Charles Edmondson both face more than two dozen counts of felonious assault and child endangering. Prosecutors say the more severe charges came after we aired this story last week, with witnesses calling every day since. Bailey Edmondson, one of Matthew Edmondson's children, is also being accused of being complicit in the abuse. He has not been booked in jail. If convicted, the couple faces up to 208 years in prison. A disbarred attorney from Mason just pleaded guilty to several counts of social security fraud. 37-year-old Richard Crosby III was sentenced to probation last year for defrauding clients in Hamilton County from 2021. Federal prosecutors say during that time he used another person's social security number, passport number, banking information. He was arrested last October. His plea deal includes a recommended sentence of at least three years in prison. 
Promoting Cincinnati as a global brand today, the Cincinnati Experience is launching a new brand, Cincy Hub, hoping to promote the voice of the Queen City. Cincinnati Experience, or CX, is an organization that looks to drive creation and build reputation of the Cincinnati region. The new brand, Cincy Hub, partners with a handful of Cincinnati organizations to help align their messaging and communication. A launch event with city leaders is scheduled for 11 o'clock this morning down at Philly Market. Let's talk a little sports. The Reds and Rockies both racking up runs in game two in their series down at Great American. It was a barn burner for last night's game. The Reds got up early, 5 nothing in the second. And despite their best efforts, the Rockies could not answer with anything significant. It was a 12-6 final in favor of the Reds. All right, same time, same place tonight for game three, 7-10 first pitch. If you want some day baseball, first pitch is set for 1-10 tomorrow. We're going to have all of our big stories and what you need to know to start your day on our daily podcast, 5 on 5. In five, you can get that wherever you get your podcast. Please go and subscribe. It'll come right to your feed automatically. But we do got to get a check on traffic as you head out the door to work or whatever it may be. Megan, how's it look? Yeah, we're looking live at many different places in the area. We're actually starting north here in Ohio. This is 75 at Liberty Way. Love this area. Things are actually looking great. Love it more because there's nothing that's impending or impeding traffic. Let's take a look at the map here that we've been looking at throughout the morning. You can see it's pretty much green wherever. 75 at 275, there's a little bit of slowdown. There's been a couple incidents in that area near Springdale, near Sharonville, just something to keep in mind. Look at this, 471 near Kentucky 8 and the Daniel Carter Beard Bridge. Things are looking great going into the city from northern Kentucky if you're headed in through the eastern area. All of your travel times look great as well. The only thing to keep in mind is that the roads are wet and it is still somewhat raining throughout the morning, Randy. It is wet, it is windy, and it is incredibly humid outside to start the day. The live radar still showing rain showers drifting through, driven by about 20 mile an hour winds. So these are uh, coming at you this morning and will be with us off and on as we head through the first part of the day as we look inside the 275 loop, you can see rain showers about to pick up again along the Norwood lateral and in through downtown. Some light rain right there over top of Sharonville. Also rain showers Loveland to Goshen made it over to Highland County again and up in portions of Butler and Warren counties. You can see Fairfield seeing some light showers. Same thing all along 75 from Liberty up toward Mason and through Lebanon and Springboro. So for today, 70 right now dealing with the rain and the gusty winds. Occasional showers possible up through about the early afternoon by about 2 p.m. or so that should be gone. But the winds stick around 40 mile an hour wind gusts. Eventually less humid air takes over, but it won't really feel that good until probably mid afternoon. So today 78 degrees dealing with early rain, windy conditions tomorrow 85 Friday 84 with sunshine and it looks like if you are heading out on a Friday afternoon, our temperatures are going to be on the warm side, but the humidity doesn't jump up until we get into the weekend. I think by Sunday, that's our next chance to possibly have it feel like the triple digits, but it feels gross outside this morning. The humidity <laughs> is, is tropical, which makes sense with the system. Yeah, I've been talking about it on the roads, but it's in the air as well. <laughs> it really is. You just have to deal with it. Yeah. All right, today's show is next. We'll be back in about 25 minutes with a local update for you, weather, traffic, all of it.